What do you do when you cross paths with one of the most vicious girls you've ever met? Well, pretty much anything up to and including being her dog. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my review of volume number one of Yuyoko Takemiya's light novel series, Toradora. This one is put out in English by Seven Seas. If you want to pick up your copy, I do have a link to Amazon and the book depository in the description down below. This one is complete in Japan. It started publication back in 2006, and there are 10 volumes in the series. There was an anime series, which I believe was 26 episodes long, and it did cover the entirety of the series, all 10 volumes, but from what I read online, it sounds like it did alter the ending from how the light novels ended, and of course, trying to compress 10 light novels into a 26 episode anime series, you gotta know that there was a whole bunch of stuff cut out so even if you've watched the anime by the sounds of it there's certainly lots for you to sort of discover and enjoy if you pick up the light novels. Toradora is the story of Ryuji who is a good guy who has basically learned to become very self-sufficient as his single mom Yasuko is a well she works at a hostess club and so she's gone most nights and then sleeps during most of the day. So Raiji cooks, he cleans. He's just a generally, like, decent guy. The only problem is, is that he inherited his father's eyes, which kind of have, like, a permanent stink eye to them, really. Like, they just are constantly intimidating. That even when he's just standing there kind of looking at you, you would get the impression that he wants to kick your ass. And so it means that Ryuji's had a very hard time making friends, that many of his classmates have this impression of him that he's a thug and a delinquent, even though he's none of those things. He's, he's kind of like a, just a big old teddy bear, really. However, this year is his new year in high school, and he figures that it's going to be a good year, because not only is he in class with his best friend Kitamaru, who is one of the few people who's managed to get past the look in Ryuji's eyes and gotten to know him, but he is also in the classroom with his crush, Minori. And he thinks maybe, just maybe this year, they can become closer. However, there is an obstacle. There always is an obstacle in light novel romance comedies, and that is the little ball of fire called Taiga. Now, Taiga is also referred to as the Palm Top Tiger because she's quite short and incredibly vicious. In fact, if Ryuji is one of the most feared, wrongly feared individuals in the school, Taiga is probably the most feared who's earned the reputation. Now, the problem is, is that she is Minori's best friend. And Ryuji and she get off to a very bad start. Now, through a series of circumstances, the two of them do end up coming to the understanding that Taiga has a crush on Ryuji's friend Kitamaru, and of course, Ryuji has a crush on Taiga's friend Minori. So the two of them kind of conspire to aid one another in the pursuits of their mutual crushes. Now, this book focuses mostly on the pursuit of Taiga trying to get to Kitamaru. Uh, because, of course, you know, Taiga kind of has to have her way. <laughs> and the bulk of this novel is the growing relationship between Taiga and Ryuji as they sort of become part of each other's lives as they try to figure out a plan in order to get Taiga and Kitamaru together. Now, Toradora is a romance comedy. It's told in the third person, although mainly Ryuji is the point of view character. It is a slice of life, school life type novel. So if you're looking for supernatural battles or anything, well, this is not the place for that. So this is that type of novel that is going to be very much driven by its characters. Much like, you know, my youth romantic comedy is wrong as I expected. 
although it's a very, very different book. In this one, we have these two main characters, Ryuji and Taiga. And I'll be honest with you, even though we do have these secondary characters, you know, Ryuji's mom, Kitamaru, Minori, they really don't get featured very heavily in this first volume. This first volume really is about Ryuji and Taiga and about their relationship and how they sort of have this mutual bond as they seek to, you know, get with each other's friends. And it really worked for me because I found the characters relatable. I found the characters interesting. And in many ways, I found them very endearing. Taiga, of course, really fits that sort of Sundari type archetype. She is incredibly violent and hard to approach. And yet you do get the sense that there is this sort of kind girl underneath all of it. But unlike a lot of Sundaris who are Sundari for just the sake of being Sundari, with Taiga you get the sense that there is a very definite reason that she is the person that she is. You get the impression that there's a lot more going on in her mind and in her world than what is being let out to everybody else. And I mean, we see glimpse of it, glimpses of it, of course, as we go through the book. And in a lot of ways, I felt very empathetic to her because it really did feel that she had created this persona almost that was a defense mechanism, but because of it, she's actually created new problems for herself. And starting to see the breaking through of that wall and, and kind of seeing how that character sees herself and everything else, I really found myself liking her, uh, despite the fact that, you know, sometimes she's a little irritating. But I mean, overall, I really liked her. I, I just... I, like I said, I found her an interesting character and a character that was at least relatable to in terms of, you know, understanding that idea of being hurt and then creating a defensive sort of personality in order to cope with that hurt. And Ryuji is much the same way. I mean, this is a guy who, yes, he fits that sort of nice guy archetype, but at the same time, he feels so much more fleshed out than that. He has some really good insights into people. And maybe that's because he's spent a lot of time watching because people don't approach him. He struggles with the fact that because of how he looks, it is an impedance to him making close relationships. In fact, the book opens with him trying to fluff his bangs and make his bangs softer because he's read in some magazine that this softer look will make you more approachable. It's this character that realizes that despite who he is inside, his appearance is preventing people from getting to know him. And I thought, given that we live in a society that is so obsessed with appearances and you know, that in a lot of cases, people don't go much deeper than that. I thought this was a, I mean, it's probably always going to be a timely theme and a timely message. I don't know that human beings are really going to progress. I hope we do, but uh, I don't know how far we're going to progress beyond the whole surface appearances type society that we currently have. And so to me, I, I really liked the sort of theme, this idea in this book that, you know, people are a lot more than what you see. Uh, Taiga, of course, like I said, she's created this very, you know, violent persona, this temperamental persona that people don't want to approach. And that means that they don't really get to know who she is. Ryuji, same thing, right? His appearance, it's not even his the way he behaves, it's just how he looks that's preventing people from getting to know him. And so you have these characters that, on the one hand, you have a character who has self-made their sort of 
personal relationship tragedies. And then on the other hand, you have this one that has those same sort of tragedies and yet they're completely beyond his control. So seeing these characters sort of come together and interact with one another and seeing sort of their emotional reactions to what their situation is, I found really interesting and a lot of fun. And, you know, there is comedic bits, there are funny bits, but I didn't really find it gut busting laughing. Like, I mean, this isn't Konosuba, right? This isn't Konosuba where you're going to just like bust a gut because it's ridiculously hilarious. I really didn't feel that. Uh, I mean, definitely, yes, there were parts that made me smile. There were parts that I got a little chuckle, but it wasn't like really laugh out loud, but I, I just couldn't really stop reading it just because I really liked these characters and found myself really rooting for them and, and rooting for them to succeed. And it was, you know what, it's kind of a mixed bag, right? Cause on the one hand you're rooting for them to succeed in what their, their endeavors are, which means hooking up with like people other than each other. But at the same time, I'm like, Oh, you're so good together. I want you guys together. Like, you know, it's so like your relationship is starting to become really sweet and, and you're just so ignorant of it because you're so focused on your other goals. Um, so I think it's going to be one of those series, you know, where you're just constantly sort of fighting against this. Oh, I like this girl. Should Ryuji end up with her? And, oh, you know, maybe Kitamaru is a really good guy. Maybe Taiga should end up with him. But, but oh, Taiga and Ryuji. It, it's probably going to be that kind of series. I mean, you know what? I'm going to say, though, at least, I, I, I've i looked online, like, just when I was looking up images for the thumbnail for this video, uh, and it seems like there's aren't, it's not like a massive harem. Like, even the covers of the books don't have that many girls. Like, it's basically Taiga, Minori, and I think there's maybe one or two others uh, that I, we probably have met briefly in this book, but they will probably play a bigger part later on. So, it's not... It doesn't seem to me like this is going to be a harem type series, which I'm glad to see, uh, because I think that would kind of ruin this really good chemistry that has started to be built in this book. So all in all, Toradora are really fun and, you know, emotionally satisfying romance comedy driven by two characters that I found myself really enjoying and really becoming interested in. Uh, I really like this one. I am definitely going to pick up more of this series as it becomes available. Unfortunately, we have to wait until August, I believe, until the volume number two comes out. So it's going to be a long time till we're done all 10 volumes, but hey, at least it's not a 25 long volume series. So hey, that's at least something to look forward to. <laughs> so all in all, Toradora, I do recommend it if you're, especially if you're looking to scratch that, you know, school life, slice of life itch, because honestly, we don't have a lot of books that are like that. I mean, really, my youth romantic comedy, as wrong as I expected, is probably the, the closest. And just really to briefly compare the two, I will just say... The characters in this book, to me, feel a little bit more real and less damaged than the characters in my youth romantic comedy. Uh, Hachiman is still, like, his his first person narration is still pretty killer, but I think this one, because it's third person, it's still enough distance between the characters, everything feels a little bit different. It definitely is a different series than my youth romantic comedy, so... Yeah, it's it, we've gotten another Slice of Life series, and uh, I'm pretty happy about that, and I'm glad it's a good one. For my next review, I am continuing with my flurry of volume number ones. I don't know how I ever got this far behind on volume number ones. I'm usually pretty good, but uh, we've had a whole bunch of them recently. So my next one is going to be on the other series that came out from new light novel publisher Soul Press, and that is going to be Strongest Gamer, Let's Play in Another World, volume number one. That'll be my next review. So if you love light novels and you're brand new to the channel, you should subscribe. I do two to three reviews a week, as well as a weekly countdown of the top 10 best-selling light novels in Japan. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye-bye for now.